Thankfully, Bernie Sanders is one of the better United States senators on the issue of Israel-Palestine. But let me tell you, he's still not perfect, and he has come a long way since 2014. So let me just remind you the way that Bernie Sanders spoke about this issue during a town hall in 2014. He got lots of pushback because of this. Take a look. Hamas has used money that came into Gaza for construction purposes, and God knows they need roads and all the things that they need, and used some of that money to build these very sophisticated tunnels into Israel for military purposes. For survival purposes. Okay, well, one second. Yes, now, I don't want to be interrupted. The question was asked. It's a fair question. And the I'm trying to... The the war. Okay, yes, Israel has the right to look, resist. If you don't... Yes, they did. You know, is I, excuse me. Again. Shut up. You, you don't have the microphone. You've you asked... Have. You know, I don't want police officers here. You're going to arrest people? No, I'm not going to arrest you people. But are you going to allow us... Here. Are you going to allow us to have a discussion? What do you think you, you come down here? You're up there. Come down to be Democrat. Join the discussion with people. Are you asking for the point? Occupied population. Right to resist. All right. They want their view is that Israel should not have a right to exist. That's the fact. Bullshit. Okay. To say that Bernie Sanders has improved on this issue would be an understatement. You can argue that he's done a complete 180 on this issue. And uh, people during the town hall were outraged because they asked Bernie Sanders about the war crimes being carried out by the Israeli government, and he acknowledged that their response was disproportionate, right? And they were overreacting. The issue was that he still kept focusing on Hamas, but what about Hamas this and Hamas that, and Israel has the right to defend itself, and they were trying to educate him on this issue. And after years, Bernie Sanders finally is changing his mind on this. And that's really important. So I'm not showing you that video to attack Bernie Sanders and smear him and make it seem as if he's less progressive as he should be. I'm sharing that video with you because I want you to know that there's hope. We can change hearts and minds. Not everyone is as principled and objective as Bernie Sanders, but it is possible to actually change people's minds on this issue. And maybe you're not convinced yet that Palestinians have the right to exist, but there's still a chance for you to change your mind. So Bernie Sanders has made a tremendous amount of progress on this issue, and in an op-ed for the New York Times, he wrote, the U.S. must stop being an apologist for the Netanyahu government, and in this op-ed he says, let's be clear, no one is arguing that Israel or any government does not have the right to self-defense or to protect its people. So why are these words repeated year after year, war after war? And why is the question almost never asked, what are the rights of the Palestinian people? In this moment of crisis, the United States should be urging an immediate ceasefire. We should also understand that while Hamas firing rockets into Israeli communities is absolutely unacceptable, today's conflict did not begin with those rockets. Over more than a decade of his right-wing rule in Israel, Mr. Netanyahu has cultivated an increasingly intolerant and authoritarian type of racist nationalism. In his frantic effort to stay in power and avoid prosecution for corruption, Mr. Netanyahu has legitimized these forces, including Itamar Ben-Gir, an extremist Jewish power party, by bringing them into government. It is shocking and sad that racist mobs that attack Palestinians on the streets of Jerusalem now have representation in its Knesset. Now he goes on to call for an immediate ceasefire, and he calls on Joe Biden to actually condition the aid that we're sending to Israel. Now, it's not perfect, right? He doesn't mention apartheid in that article, and to my knowledge, he still doesn't support BDS. He's against the crackdown in the U.S. against BDS, but he doesn't necessarily see BDS as a solution himself. But when you compare what Bernie is saying now to what he said back in 2014, it is, it's a huge difference. It's like night and day, and it's really important. Now, part of the reason why a lot of lawmakers don't want to speak out in defense of the Palestinian people is because any and all condemnation of the Israeli government's actions is usually conflated with anti-Semitism. What? You're condemning this far-right extremist Benjamin Netanyahu? It must be because you're an anti-Semite. So the question is, when somebody who's a Jewish American like Bernie Sanders condemns the far-right extremist government of Israel, what's the response? 
Well, it's the same response. They tweak it a little bit rather than saying that he's anti-Semitic. They just say he's a self-hating Jew. And if you read the op-ed that Bernie Sanders wrote, there is zero indication that he is a self-hating Jew. But that didn't stop Alan Dershowitz from going on the far-right Newsmax TV and calling Bernie Sanders just that. And ironically condemning Palestine for war crimes. You get inadvertently, you get the social media supporting Hamas, the New York Times supporting Hamas, and it sends a very powerful message. Do it again. Kill children, you know, kill civilians, attack, 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 commit war crimes. You'll prevail on this because of the anti-Semitism that stimulates so much of this. And you can be a Jew and an anti-Semite. Uh, you know, Bert Biden uh, has made some strong statements uh, positively, and I commend him for that. But Bernie Sanders, who's Jewish, is a self-hating Jew, a self-hating Jew who is willing to see Israel be defeated militarily by a terrorist group because he's on the hard left and he has to follow the hard left. And that's what he has been doing. Think of how preposterous and idiotic this argument is from Alan Dershowitz. He's calling Bernie Sanders a self-hating Jew because Bernie Sanders condemned ethnic cleansing and genocide from a far-right government that wants an ethno-state, quite literally. That makes him a self-hating Jew. That's moronic. And this isn't necessarily an argument that only Alan Dershowitz is peddling. Lots of people who are staunchly pro-Israel, uh, Israel, usually funded by the Israeli lobby, by the way, they are saying the same exact thing. So in an interview with Ali Velshi on MSNBC, who's been great on this issue, by the way, uh, Bernie Sanders responded to this, responded to claims that criticisms of the Israeli government is anti-Semitic. And Bernie Sanders, um, he had a great take. Senator, um, you, you published an op-ed. I, I uh, delivered a commentary yesterday on the fact that we, we do need to start taking the rights of uh, the human rights of Palestinians into account. Senator Ted Cruz, not talking about you, but talking about the squad's uh, opposition to, um, to things. He, he, he said this on Thursday. It's disgraceful that you have members of the United States Congress that basically operate as shills for terrorists and undermine Israel. And they undermine Israel so often that after a while you start to say, okay, we get it. You don't like the Jews. Folks have said that about you too. Um, how do we how do we understand the ability to criticize the policies of the Israeli government as being entirely separate from and counter to anti-Semitism? No, that's exactly right. The Israeli government has evolved over the years into a pretty strong right-wing government. And their coalition now includes people who are overt racists. And when you have the United States of America, Ali, putting almost $4 billion a year into Israel, we have the right to demand that they respect the human rights of all people, including the Palestinians. What we need now is an even-handed policy which protects the security of Israel. They have a light right to live in peace and security without terrorist attacks, but the people in the Palestinian territories also have a right to live in peace and dignity. And anyone who takes a look at what's going on in Gaza right now, where youth unemployment is 70%, and I'm talking about before this current war and the terrible things that have happened in the war, where youth unemployment is sky high, where people can't get electricity and clean water on a regular basis, this is a territory controlled by Israel. So we got to deal with the corruption of the Palestinian Authority. We got to deal with that. But we have also got to create a situation where the people in the Palestinian territories are respected as well. Yeah. So what he's basically saying is what's wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter who you are and where you come from. Genocide is genocide. Ethnic cleansing is ethnic cleansing. My words, not his, of course, but the sentiment remains. Don't let these bloodthirsty fools intimidate you into thinking that it's anti-Semitic to condemn the right-wing government of Israel that wants an ethno-state. They're the ones who are actually racist. They're the ones who are prejudiced, who hate another group of people because of their identity. It is not anti-Semitic to condemn the right-wing government of Israel. To not condemn the right-wing government of Israel means you actually don't care about people who are suffering. 
So don't let them try to weaponize their identities to shut down criticism. This is just a diversion tactic pushed by the Israeli lobby to get people to turn a blind eye to the war crimes being committed by Israel. But no, silence is unacceptable. And for those like Andrew Yang and Richie Torres who go out of their way to defend the ethnic cleansing that Israel is doing currently against the Palestinian people, they're the ones who will be viewed as the intolerant bigots who support something so egregious that I don't think it's that long until all of history sees what's happening. In fact, I can't even say that. The rest of the world already sees what's happening. It's just the United States who brainwashes its citizens. But again, even that's starting to change as some U.S. media outlets are calling it what it is, an apartheid. They're calling Israel an apartheid state. They're calling Benjamin Netanyahu a war criminal because he is. And the United States is the sole vote that blocks condemnation of this on the U.N. Security Council. So honestly, we stand alone in the world in allowing this to take place. So understand that in the broader context of world history and the fight for justice, we know who's on the right side of history. I think that's very obvious. It's not folks like Alan Dershowitz. It's folks who stand up for the Palestinian people. And that should be obvious. It shouldn't be this controversial. People shouldn't be this afraid to speak up because they're afraid that condemning a psychopath like Netanyahu means that they're anti-Semitic. That's preposterous. And we have to absolutely vociferously push back against this moronic narrative. We have to.